Welcome back to the SML Podcast, playing the field with Field General 007. All right, we're going to kind of do something a little bit different uh, for the main segment of this podcast, but I do want to talk about a few teams, and one of those being the Chicago Bears, uh, 5-0. and They just beat the Eagles 28-23, to dropped the Eagles to 4-1. and The Eagles who, you know, look to take over the NFC now this season, and it appears that there is... An unlikely contender with the Bears at 5-0. Don't forget, though, about the Falcons, Cardinals, Cowboys, and Buccaneers. All at 4-1 apiece. The NFC has some tight competition. The AFC currently being ruled by the Dolphins and Colts at 6-0 and 5-0 currently as we speak. Uh, There's a lot of action going on. We can't wait to see what happens. But I honestly, I'm probably the most excited about the Bears season so far at 5-0. It's just typically not a team that you really uh, associate with you know, being playing great football and contending, uh, you know, in the NFC, not, you know, just the NFC North. I mean, the Vikings have ruled that division in our league this season or this cycle. And now, you know, the Bears, we got a new owner and they're out doing great things. So we may either have to investigate this to look at some kind of conspiracy. Maybe they're using an action replay or videotaping people's defenses. I don't, or maybe a lag switch. Lag switch is pretty popular in Madden, but. We'll find out. Uh, all jokes aside, the Bears are having a fantastic season. Um, this episode's called What to Do, What Not to Do, and I'm not talking about your franchise in general, but this can help your franchise. What to do and what not to do during a uh, blowout situation, you know, where you're already, we'll just say you're down two touchdowns, 14 points or more, and, you know, oftentimes... Guys get too aggressive when they're down multiple scores, especially if you're looking at 17, 21 points or more. And, uh, you know, oftentimes, like, you know, when I've gotten up on people in the past, and what you see is guys just throw out their game plan. I mean, defensively, they'll start throwing every man blitz. They're just trying to send the kitchen sink. And all you're doing uh, there is just exposing your back end. You're getting a lot of basically cover zero situations where you've got straight man to man coverage, no safety help up top. And, you know, there's a lot of great receivers in this league with a lot of speed that can beat the man-to-man coverage. And as we know, man-to-man has been uh, pretty lackluster in Madden. It's not uh, really something you can depend on. It's something you only really want to run, like, 10% or less of your defensive snaps a game. And guys, there's way too many guys that rely on man-to-man coverage instead of just playing the zone, playing a base zone, you know, staying with the cover three. I typically don't play a lot of cover two um, unless, you know, the the distance is shorter just because the, the gaps in that cover two for the post route, you can just really get gashed if you try to rely on a cover two. So rely on a cover three, cover four, um, zone blitz type scheme. Guys, though, they throw everything out the kitchen sink and they're just going to try to really, you know, expose you. And in turn, they're going to expose themselves. And that 17-point lead very quickly turns into a 28 to 35-point lead. And things just, they get out of hand. And, uh... You know, offensively, guys, same thing. You'll see it. I've seen even great players. Um, I remember watching a Colts game. You know, the Colts were up. Uh, Prime was up on a guy. Uh, I believe it was the Panthers game a while back. And um, it may have been last Madden. But I remember seeing Hail Marys and everything being thrown in this game. People just totally trashed their offensive game plan. Like, oh, well, all right, I guess i got to try to get some points. So try throwing Hail Marys. They're running every little gimmicky gadget play. Instead of just sticking with the offense, you know, taking what the defense gives you and trying to get back in the game. There's been games that I've been down two touchdowns or more, and just because I tried to simplify, I was smart enough to, or more aware enough not to let my emotions get in it, just kind of getting back to basics, even get more basic than what I was, and trying, you know, just to take what the defense gives you, and then defensively just try to keep the pressure on them. You know, not necessarily, not meaning blitz-wise, but make them take the check down. And a lot of guys are just, they're too aggressive. They want the big 50, 60 yard bomb to, you know, the quick touchdown. We all love those plays. And I think that's oftentimes why guys lose games more times than not is instead of, you know, waiting for that play to open up, they're opening the drive with that play. You get sacked at second and 18. Um, and unfortunately that and I've said it many times, the uh, aggressive pass rush feature is uh, way overpowered. Um, you know, and a lot of times the uh, snap count, I try to run, you know, good cadence and everything, especially when I know a guy's running aggressive pass rush. Just because you hit that button doesn't mean that you're going to get the offsides. It's kind of unfortunate because that aggressive pass rush feature is way too overpowered. When I had tweeted out uh, to the devs last summer about having defense assignments, all I wanted the ability to do 
was, let's say that I got a speedster, I'm facing a speedster wide receiver, and I want to match up with a speedster corner, or there's a really tall receiver, and I have a six foot, six foot two corner, I wanted to be able to say, hey, you know, follow that guy around the field. I don't care about any of this other kind of gimmicky little Madden features that are, are oftentimes they're added in and just way too overpowered. It's not like when they, and it's more than likely kind of what happened with the hit stick when they first introduced it. I bet you there was just a ton of fumbles the first year they had the fit stick, the fit stick, the hit stick. And, uh, you know, and over time it's, it's still a huge part of the game, you know, but you don't really see those fumbles, especially now. And the one feature I do like for adjustments is the ability to, uh, Make sure that you turn on that conservative ball carrier. Um, you still have fumbles on that, but uh, guys that like to turn on the uh, aggressive tackling where they're getting the big hits automatically and they may deny it, um, but you're kind of able to, you know, it, it's kind of a checkmate game, you know. You're sitting there playing chess, and uh, it's just kind of weird, though, the inconsistencies that you see with these features and how that uh, plays into effect, but just, you know, in terms of staying to the you know, the meat and potatoes of this uh, podcast, um, you know, just stick with it, man. You guys, you got to stay with the basics when you're in that situation of, you know, um, you're kind of losing by, you know, two touchdowns or more, and you don't want to wind the final score being five or six touchdowns or more. Don't really focus on the comeback. A lot of times in my head, it's just about trying to match their touchdowns to keep the score respectable. Because, I mean, you're not going to win every game, so I think you just got to go in the mindset that, you know, I'm going to do the best that I can and try not to let the game um, matter so much that you wind up embarrassing yourself even more. Because um, a lot of it's just a mind game where, you know, you're playing a good guy and you're like, well, I'm going to try this, that, and the other. And I know what he likes to run on third and three. You know, he likes to hit this drag route to, uh, from this formation. And, you know, you in your head, you've, you've seen so many of these streams and everything else, and you played this guy so many times over the years, and you think that you got the great game plan. Uh, don't overthink things. Um, just play your game. And because uh, there's been plenty of games. That's another thing I do too many times than not. As a guy that I, I play a lot, I try not to call my usual offense, and those are the games that I wind up uh, losing and losing by uh, – you know, big points like, oh, they're going to know this play is coming. Well, so what? Just because they know it's coming doesn't mean that they can stop it. And even if they do cover your main route, you still got three or four other, you know, routes to throw. Um, so just stick with the game plan. That's kind of what it means, you know, what to do, what not to do. What not to do is not to uh, get too aggressive. And what to do is uh, stick with what you know and, uh, you know, try to make them make them beat you don't give them the game i guess that's the best advice that i can give is uh you know just don't get too aggressive i see that more times than not guys just really just throw in the kitchen sink i've said it over and over in this podcast i'm getting a little redundant but uh you know i i think a lot of guys out there maybe will benefit from that because you don't even realize that you're doing it but stop and think the next time you're down two or three touchdowns and look at the plays you're calling are you a guy that's a cover three um, you know, cover four defense typically where you sprinkle in some man blitzes or and now you're all of a sudden, you know, oh yeah, I'm gonna call uh D B spinner, I'm gonna throw this one at him, and next thing you know, you've called six or seven man blitzes in a row and you can't stop the guy and you have no idea what's going on. You're getting so frustrated that uh you know the game's just getting away from you. So just kinda try to next time you're in that situation, just stop and evaluate if that's something you're doing and maybe you're not. You know, there are just that, you know, unfortunately, there are some guys out there like Prime that, uh, you know, no matter what you do, he's played so many freaking games, you know, over the years, and he's been playing since uh, Madden 06, and there's times where he would just play straight lobby ball before we got into the online uh, CFM, where he would play, it wouldn't be out of the question for him to play five, six hundred uh, online games, you know, throughout a year, which isn't, you know, the most, but that's, that's a lot more than I ever played. I mean, when I was what I called heavy into playing uh, Madden, I mean, I only played at most 300. I mean, typically, yeah, I mean, it was anywhere from two to 300 games. So he had always doubled the amount of time I uh, I ever invested in the game. So just do, uh, you do your best not to get too aggressive. Don't beat yourself. I hope this helps you out. If it did, hit it with a thumbs up. Comment below. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, at Sim Madden League. Uh, the other podcasts from Meets and Prime are on uh, 
iTunes and SoundCloud links in the description below. If you're looking for a new team or not a new league, be sure to apply. Uh, we do have an application process, a little pre-screening to keep the cheese out and keep the you know the league to what it is today. Uh, thanks for listening. Be sure to like, subscribe, take care, and have a great day.